This episode of the Memory Palace is brought to you by Amazon Prime's exclusive Lore. It's a chilling six-episode anthology series from executive producer of The Walking Dead and an executive producer of The X-Files based on the podcast phenomenon with over 70 million downloads. Creator and narrator Aaron Mankey explores the most terrifying tales throughout history, takes a myth that is rooted in historical folklore, and twists it, exposing timeless terrors that still haunt us today. Real life can scare you to death. Watch exclusively on Amazon Prime Video this October, starting on Friday the 13th. This episode of the Memory Palace is brought to you by our friends at Article, makers of fine furniture with fantastic industrial and mid-century and Scandinavian designs. Also the makers of the lamp that is lighting this script as I read it. They have everything you need at Article for your home, including brand new, a whole array of fine leather couches. These are really beautiful, extraordinarily well-made, just like everything they've got. And for $49, they will ship anything, including a large, beautiful leather couch to your front door, regardless of size. And you can get $50 off your first order of $100 or more at article.com slash memory palace. That's article.com slash memory palace. This is the Memory Palace. I'm Nate DeMeo. A word of warning. This is a Halloween story. And things get unpleasant. His wife was the first to die. She was 35 years old. It was 1883, and it left George Brown a widower at 41 years old, with five kids and a small farm he'd carved out of the woods in Exeter, Rhode Island. Six months later, his oldest daughter, named Mary, just like her mother, started coughing, just like her mother, and died. Seven years later, George's only son, Edwin, started coughing, just like his mother, Mary, just like his sister, Mary. Edwin held on, though it seemed like his life was being sucked out a little bit more every night. And then it came from Mercy. She was pretty and 19. It took her quickly, and she was buried in the frozen ground in a January morning in the small cemetery in the hill. And George Brown went home that night to the old farmhouse in the woods, terrified that the same thing that came for his wife Mary and his daughter Mary and his daughter Mercy the thing that still threatened his only son, would come for the two daughters he had left. And his neighbors were simply terrified. They came to George Brown one morning to tell him the truth about what had been killing his family. The good people of Exeter knew why whole families sometimes wasted away. One death was tragic luck. A second, a third, was supernatural. They told George Brown that one of his family members, his beloved wife, his daughters, one of them was rising from the dead and coming into his home while he slept and slowly draining the life from his children. One of them, Mary, Mary, or Mercy, was a vampire. And there was only one way to know which it was, and only one thing they could do to save his son and keep his two daughters alive. But there are no vampires. And I'm sorry if that's a spoiler. And this is a Halloween story, and maybe I should just let things go for a little while longer, teasing out the idea that there's a vampire in the story. But there aren't any vampires in this story or out here in the world. There's just George Brown, whose wife died of tuberculosis one year after a physician in Berlin discovered that it was bacterial and described ways to prevent the disease's spread. But word of his discoveries hadn't yet spread to Exeter, Rhode Island. So there's George Brown, who lost his wife and his daughter. And then after seven years of peace, his son gets the same disease. And then his 19-year-old daughter gets it and dies within months. And then his neighbors come to tell him that one of these people whom he loved, one of his girls, is a vampire. And George Brown in 1893, a modern year, seven years before the beginning of the 20th century, a year in which the first motion picture studio is established, that basketball is invented, that General Electric and the Sierra Club and goddamn Abercrombie and Fitch are founded. George Brown and his neighbors go to the cemetery on the hill and dig up the bodies of his Mary, Mary, and Mercy. And Mercy, who had died just three months before and had been buried in the frozen ground, still had warm blood in her heart which they knew because they pulled it from her chest. 
and that fact convinced them that Mercy was the vampire. And so they burned George Brown's daughter's body and brewed her ashes into a tea and made his only son drink it to keep him safe from the evil that was killing him, only to see him die two months later. Because drinking a tea brewed from the exhumed corpse of your sister doesn't cure tuberculosis. And burning the body of Mercy Brown didn't protect George Brown's other daughters either, though they were spared nonetheless. And George Brown knew some mercy. At least that much.